DJ Wiki Girl is a fun and colorful children's book about a young DJ who uses the power of music to change the moods and minds of her friends. I talk one on one with the author and illustrator of the book, DJ Nanny Lopes, for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Eight Lopes, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Hey, Quentin, how are you, buddy? Oh, I'm doing just great. Uh, obviously, you are an award-winning DJ here in the Low Country, also known as DJ Natty Heavy. And I know that you just released a book called DJ Wiki Girl, which is a mm -hmm. fun and colorful children's book about a young DJ who uses the power of music to change the moods and minds of her friends. And obviously, you wrote and illustrated the book. Mm -hmm. What is your mood today as a published author and as a DJ and as a dad? Oh man, uh, I'm feeling great today. You know, it's uh, it's wild to kind of put all of those three things together, right? Like, I never imagined in my life that all three of them. I I, I think I imagined kind of all of them separately, but I don't think I ever once was like, I'm going to do all three of those things at the same time. It just, you know, I knew I was going to be a DJ. Cool. I knew I liked to draw and I liked to write, so I was like, oh, maybe I could do this one day. But I kind of always wanted to be a dad, but it's just you know, one of those things. The, one plus one plus one never equaled three in my head, you know? So it feels good to do that, you know? Wow. Who is Natty Lopes now as a published author? Who am I now? Hmm. That's an interesting question, man. Um, I don't... It, I'm, I'm more of a person that stays at home now. You know, I'm more of a homebody. I, I could definitely say that, that I was in my 20s when I was going out all the time and doing focusing more on DJing and partying, you know, I'm not out till three o'clock in the morning anymore. You know, I'm, I'm home now, midnight, the latest, if I have a wedding. Um, so I, I think the published author part of it actually coincides with my, my father's side of it more than anything, right? The fatherhood part, because the hours kind of match up as far as what I'm, I'm able to do and, and, and get um, positivity from a, a job as well as getting positivity from my family. Whereas being a nightlife DJ, it was hard to get positivity from both, you know? So doing, having this new venture kind of helps me achieve positivity on all sides. Absolutely. Where is that balance between being a dad and a DJ and other things? Uh, That's a great question, Quinn. And if you can answer that one for me, man, that would be <laughs> amazing. Uh, that's, uh, it depends on the day, you know? I think it's obviously easier for my family as, you know, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but then, you know, Thursday, Friday starts coming around. I think, you know, we start to have a little dynamic in the family that changes a little bit where it's like, you know, we start to miss each other. And, you know, so certain things maybe become a little bit, you know, not as, as a happy home, not to say it's, it's, it's negative, but it is certainly a different dynamic, right? So there's a, a, a weekly balance to that, especially now as we're getting into busy season in Charleston because they're, you know, as we get into spring and summer and fall, the beautiful, beautiful times here, my gigs become more and more and more. So it becomes a, a harder thing to balance. But I think, you know, this move, we, being an author illustrator, hopefully if it carries out into the future, will help continue. Maybe, hey, I, don't, I can DJ a lot less and you know, sit back and draw and write and then have more time, you know? How would you draw and write about your life right now? Ooh, great question, man. Uh, it would definitely have to be another, well, you know, it would have to be, it wouldn't be a kid's book necessarily if it was about my life. Um, it would maybe more of, uh, uh, I don't want to say a guide, but you know, like a man, it would be an instruction manual of some kind on how to take your, what your passion is and learn how to do it yourself and go out and do it. And I, I think that's kind of been the theme of my life is whenever it's, there's something that I know that I want to do, I just figure out a way to do it. Right. It's like, it, I wanted to do videography. I figured out a way to do video, videography on my own. I wanted to build websites. I figured out how to build websites. I wanted to figure out how to draw and, you know, write books. I figured out how to do that on my own. So it's like, I, I think my, the book of my life, I think if, if I'm going to, Dig deep into that would be a how to on how to just do figure out what you want to do and just do it no matter what it is just find the time find and put in the effort. What would you put in the effort to make music your passion? 
that was easy. I mean, music is just, it, 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 everyone in, intrinsically, I, I think, loves music. I think innately, you, you, you people dance when you're babies. You know, you, that's one of the first things that we do as, as, we, as we're, we're born, right? You hear a beat and all of a sudden, you know, you're moving like something naturally um, ignites in us. And I think, you know, for some people, maybe it, it ignites more. I also had an opportunity more with it when I was younger. Um, I got to be a DJ at a young age because I had some friends who, who had started, uh, their parents had started a speaker company. So we had access to equipment, right? So I got an opportunity to touch and feel music in a different way. Um, than people did. I also, you know, was playing drums at a young age. So, but it, I, I think for me, it isn't an effort, you know, with music. I think it's a, and the effort part for me is just literally setting up the equipment, right? And like lugging all the gear and stuff like that and putting in the marketing work. When it comes to the actual music, that's just feeling, you know, I, I don't think there's anything that I, I think about when I do that part of it, right? How can you feel music today? It's changed. It's changed over the years quite a bit, um, but fundamentally still the same. You know, uh, as you're talking, if I'm talking with physically, you know, you used to have vinyl records that everyone uses and you dig them out of the crate and put it on and, and touch it. And you still do have that. I still have turntables up, upstairs in my house and I still rock vinyl. Um, but, you know, I, and now you can either, I mean, there's so many ways, right? So now you've got the vinyl option. You've got controllers which are like these digital turntables and mixers all in one. You've got CD versions of that called CDJs. You can do what I'm doing with vinyl on an iPad, right? So like complete shows on an iPad that sound just as good. Um, I'm actually about to do that for the bridge run. Exactly. You could be a DJ today, Quentin, today. All you need is some music and a piece of software, and you're on there and you're cutting and scratching and mixing. Uh, I'm about to do that for the bridge run. I'm going to have an iPad set up with a little portable speaker set up and DJ on the bridge run while I walk wow. it. Um, but there's also like, you don't actually have to physically touch it. If you have a virtual reality setup, there's mm -hmm. virtual reality ways to learn how to DJ. So you put on a, a set and it, it comes, the equipment is in front of you virtually and you literally with your own hands mix music that way. So you don't actually have to have it in your physical space. You can just have it in a virtual space and literally learn how to DJ. And the, the technology is crazy. What music will advance in the next five to 10 years? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know if, I, I think it just becomes, uh, how people can add more effects and how a single person can do more, right? I think it becomes, cause now we have the pieces in place that are, okay, we know this works, right? So how do we make this stuff better and how do we make it more portable? How do we make it more accessible? And I think that's where we're going with all music, right? Look at how. I mean, I can't even tell. I would assume the number of songs released every day is in, you know, five to 10 million. If you count the number of people who have access just to computers and SoundCloud and things like that, who are literally just dropping music. And I don't just mean the professionals, right? Amateurs. So I think accessibility to music is huge. And I think accessibility and ease of making music sound different is big in the DJ world. So I think we're just going to end up getting more buttons and knobs and things are going to be lighter and we're going to have like probably more like sort of wireless connections to things that are going to improve. Um, and then everything is just going to be more streamlined in that way. And then hopefully prices come down and it becomes more accessible that way. But that's only after we get out of this chip shortage stuff. And that's a whole nother, you know, thing. But I think it, in a, in a, in a nutshell, accessibility and adding science to the sound of music in, a, in an easy way. You just press the button and it's like, oh, that just changed in a really cool way. And then you add this button and it's like, oh, that just changed into that. And so like that kind of thing. And when it comes to accessibility to music and now that you have SoundCloud and all these other things that you that are out here, obviously, how do you distinguish yourself as a DJ? Um, my difference is my voice. I think um, I have been able to use my literal mouth to keep parties hype. You know, I've worked in radio, so I know how things are and shows are supposed to sound from the radio show to a live show to a video. Mm. And there's a lot of guys who aren't talking on a microphone as much as I am. And I think I have a, a level of, A, knowing when to talk, when not to talk, um, unless I've had a one too many Bud Lights, and that's a whole different situation. Um, but... Uh, 
then it's um, it's just my my voice has definitely helped me excel because then I can also it's given me opportunities for like sponsors because you know if you don't have a voice then you know how is this person going to know that this product is available? So I've been on the microphone and be like, yo, hey, what's up, everybody? Let's get to the bar. Let's drink Bud Light. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And you know, while the other guys necessarily aren't doing that. So I think that more than the music differentiates me because I don't think I am any better than any DJ. In this. There are, I can, there are a million DJs who are technically better than me, physically better than me at, you know, scratching and remixing and um, doing tricks and like all this crazy stuff that I sit in awe of, in awe of all over the city. So it makes me wonder sometimes why I have this, these awards, right? Because I don't believe I deserve them. But I think the thing that differentiates me is that I can, I can do that with my voice. And also, I'm not afraid to play corny music for the, just whatever, it, whatever the occasion comes. You know, I'm not too serious about it. But I, I think that's it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what I'm trying to do with my books, too, is I'm not trying to be too serious in anything about the books. You know, it's all about for kids and it's all about nonsensical words. And it's all about, you know, just bringing um, that kind of the same kind of energy from music into the books too you know and i want to get to that in just a second but what genre of music describes you everything good music i think the genre of music that i you know i i, I don't it, I, I, you know that's a hard answer that's a, i guess you know that's more of a question for you Quinn. what genre of music do you think describes me you know i i don't think that because music is so subjective right i can tell you that and it also depends on the day. One morning I'm waking up and I'm, you know, I got the hoodie on and I'm all hip hop, you know, yeah. the next day I'm literally, you know, dancing around to, uh, we don't talk about Bruno in my head and I'm, you know, a Disney dad, you know, or I'm sitting down in the backyard and I'm in just like feeling like a country boy or, you know, <clears throat> some days I'm all business and I'm just listening to like, you know, in my head, I'm maybe, but it's funny. I barely, when I'm in my car, I don't listen to anything. So some days I'm silence, you know, and, 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 it depends on the day, you know, but I, that's why I kind of say everything, you know, and, but also music subjective. It's like one of those things and It's really is from the outside looking in. What, what does some, what else would someone describe it as? Not to get deep like that or anything, man, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> look at music from the outside looking in. How do you look at music from the outside looking in? Um, with soft eyes, with soft ears. Um, I think the people that, say I don't like a certain genre don't have that ability right if you say I don't like country music I don't like hip-hop I don't like then you're automatically out of that category right like because there's something in every single genre of music for everybody you're just not listening with soft ears you're just not you're not listening well enough you're not listening for oh man like that that note and that progression and like these lyrics that may not i may have not had thought of related to me in this genre actually really 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 do so you just have to be able to listen from the outside looking at you and it's just like with a human being right you have to be able to be accepting of of what it is despite what you think it might be you know what i mean and and i think that's important to think about in life and in music when it comes to music what have you been able to accept as a dj um, except as in like, and like what is good and bad or as oh, in, yes. and, and, and that's hard. That becomes hard because especially as you grow older, mm. you tend to just feel like the music from your generation is the greatest ever, right? You're just like, ah, uh, this is my time. This is the best. We made the best music. And yes. every generation thinks that I don't care who you think you are. If you're you know, born in the 60s, you think the music from the 70s is the greatest. If you think born in the 70s, you think the music from the 80s is the greatest. Whatever your childhood music is that you grew up with is the best. And it's hard to accept that I'm a, an aging DJ and, you know, there's uh, the 21-year-olds who are now, you know, coming out and partying and that the, the crowd that I was catering to are listening to something completely different than what i was listening to right so it is hard to accept that and accept music when it's newer and it's something you're unfamiliar with and it's not from your time so again you have to listen with soft ears and open mind and especially as a dj or someone who's entertaining you have to realize that this music is not for me right it's for the crowd 
So you have to realize that this music is actually, this new music is making your job easier. You just have to, you know, accept it that way. And it's because it's not, if it was up to me, man, I would listen probably to the Roots and Wu-Tang and, you know, uh, <laughs> Glenn Miller or like it, that, but I'm not going to do that, you know, because these kids want to hear something completely different. So you just have to, and accepting music is also, I have two ways of it because there's a professional side and then there's a personal side, right? Because there's going to be music that I just want to listen to for me, but then professionally, all right, man, you got to download this one. Let's go. You need to play it, you know, and then you got to do it. So this is, is what it is. <clears throat> separate those two oh um oh man it, it, I, I i guess that's easy to answer when i'm cleaning the house it's you know listen to something completely different than what i know that i'm going to be downloading music and take I, I definitely have a set time to research music and then you know i have uh because you have to be in the mood to do it and then to and and then I have to, you know, then it's at work, you're just completely, you know, you have to go with what the crowd wants. You know, I'm not, there are certain DJs that don't have to do that. There are DJs who have made a name for themselves playing whatever they want, whatever they want to listen to, but they're not going after the same kind of things that I'm going after, which is weddings and, you know, private events and birthday parties and stuff like that. They don't want a DJ like that there. You know, you're not at a wedding and like, ah, that guy's playing what he wants to listen to and, you know, all excited <laughs> about that. So, um, but yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much how I, how I try to separate those two. And I personally, on a on a personal note, I love. I just listen to nineties R and B. That's all I listen to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I listen to. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, all. I mean, <laughs> hey, that's the zone you live in. That's you. You know, yeah, like yeah. that's it. My man Quentin's crooning, bottom lip just trembling. Oh, yeah, man. I see you. <laughs> I see you, dude. <laughs> And going back to your book, how have you entertained, informed, and inspired kids after this book has been published? Um, you know what's great about this is so now I've got the I've got DJ Wiki Girl, I've got this beat is bananas, and then I've got Where's the Whoop, and I've been touring through CCSD um, with these books and reading to kids and like doing these presentations for them, and um, and then when some of that actually turned into um, not only just doing book readings, but I'm going to start doing career kind of talks at for CCSD and other school uh, districts as well. So what's going to be really great is I'm going to be able to talk to these kids in an entertaining way, you know, coming from a DJ perspective or coming from an author, a creative perspective and talk about these jobs that aren't, you know, necessarily the traditional jobs, right? They're something that you can be creative and go after because I think that's the way the world is moving, you know, more of the creative side of, of jobs because robots can't be as creative. You're not going to get as much creativity from AI as you ever will from a human being. Now, maybe I might be wrong, but I, I don't think we will ever get to the point of, you know, th there's going to be things that human beings do that creatively that robots and AI will never be able to do. And I think for the future, that's important for these kids to know, hey, you know, there are going to be these professions that you can do things where you enjoy them. So I think after writing these books, especially because, you know, I read these ones, like an older kid is not going to look at this kid's book and be like, oh, yeah, hey, 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 unless they know that they can do it. And they can do it right now with what they have in their hands. I mean, I drew this book with an iPad, you know? So, like, a kid can literally right now, if they have a, a character, right, that they design on an iPad, they could put that on a T-shirt, they could put that on a website, they can make a book out of it at the age of, like, six, you know? And literally with a little parent's help, they can start a little online store and oh my gosh, you're like, you've paid for college all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like if it's cute enough, if you're, there's enough reach. So there are possibilities for these kids. That I, I think are, I think is my next goal outside of this is to tell them about, Hey, let's go like within music, within traditional art, within podcasts and stuff that you're doing, like there are careers in, in what we're doing, right? Like, yeah. so they just got to know. Oh, absolutely. And what perspective did you use when you started to write this book? Um, a child's, I would hope. I, I think I was trying to I use my daughter and what she would be entertained by in my world, you know? Um, like I said, there's a lot of nonsensical words in these books. Wiki, wiki, woo, and, you know, <laughs> what's up, and, like, stuff <laughs> like that. So it, it's all about, I wanted to get in their heads and what is like a DJ to a kid.
kind of, you know, and a DJ to a kid, I would think is someone who's out there having fun and playing music and making people dance. Right. And then I, I tied that into what wouldn't kind of an adult like to see out of this, like what is the power of music to someone who's a little bit older and then explain through a kid's eyes uh, or, you know, I mean, to a kid, what the power of music really is, you know, hopefully through the, the eyes of a child. I don't know if that made sense the way I said that, but and, uh, yeah, anyway, I try to use a kid's perspective to, yeah, anyway, it would, I think you get it, Quinn. Yes, but, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, that was, um, yeah, definitely tried to use my child as a basis for what would she be entertained by and then be able to use and then inform and inspire her via that channel. What is the power of music today? Um, you know, music is in an interesting place today because, like I said, it's um, it's something that all of us have easy access to to make or you know really listen to anything. Right? You can put your phone in, and all you got to do is type it up, and it, it's it's there. Um, I had a buddy talk to me the other day. He was like, "Man, you should do a Nina Simone lo-fi hip hop remix album," and I was like. I probably should, but there's, I just typed it in and then like, there were like 900 of them, you know what I mean? And already done. So, um, it, it depends on the angle of it that you're coming from. The power of music is always, if you're from a creative angle and you're creating music, then it's uh, going to be completely different than it is from a listener, right? Because someone who's creating music is going to come from an emotional standpoint. They're going to come from a point in their lives. They're going to use this music as, as, um, as an emotional outlet. Um, as a creative outlet. So that's the power of music for them. The power of music for a listener, I think still at the same day, it fundamentally remains the same as probably what music is always has been as a listener is to get, you know, to get emotion, to get, um, uh, which McCall was the word I'm looking for. Uh, 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 when, uh, when it ties together with your life. Oh my God, why can't I, uh, gosh, anyway. So uh, that the word is literally just not on the it's on the tip of my tongue. Right. Um, but anyway, re, uh, relate, relate, yeah. so they can yes. relate. Oh, why was it so hard to think of that word? <laughs> um, yeah, so they listen to music so they can relate it to their lives, you know. And I think that's the power of music. Still, uh, so fundamentally, it's still the same. I think it's just you. It's just easier to find now whatever you want it to be. So if you're in a sad mood and you want to listen to happy music. You go ahead and do that if you want to. If you're in a, or if you want a sad mood, you want to listen to sad music. Go ahead and do that. You can just that's the more probably the power of music is that it's available, right? It's just like boom, you, you get it, and you can change your entire mood just by listening to it at the drop of a hat nowadays. You know, um, and how yeah. has the, how has music changed your daughter? Um, she wants to be a DJ. She uh she wants to be a little DJ and she's in her dance classes and she sings and makes up songs every day. Um, but what's funny is I don't think it's changed her because again she's kind of always been like that. You know, we've she's been a little performer. We had a little toy microphone we got for her for her, like her second birthday and she grabbed that thing and started performing on it from day one. And you know she's still performing and for us and so I, I don't think it's changed. I think it's growing more than anything in her and because it's kind of always been there but now it's sprouting you know so the change maybe is in its development you know wow and how, how do you hope she will grow with the music today in the next five years i just hope she enjoys it you know whatever it, it doesn't matter to me what she does if she decides to have a career in music that's fine if she doesn't it's fine i, I just would hope that she finds again the power and what music can do for her you know, as, as you're a kid, our childhood is a little bit different than, than theirs now. You know, where you probably, you might be the same way where you listen to the radio while you're doing your homework. And, you know, you're recording your favorite songs on, uh, you know, oh man, I had, I missed it from the beginning or like DJ talked over it. And like, so, you know, she's not going to have necessarily those same experiences, but I hope she has experiences in her childhood where music is very powerful. I, you know, she comes to my shows and things like that. So I, she already knows that music is powerful for our family. Um, and, and what it does for our family is as far as it even pays the bills and, you know, gives her dad enjoyment. And she's with me and sees me practice DJing and do mixes at the house. Um, and, you know, she sings me and Kanto soundtrack every day. Um, so, you know, she knows she en enjoys it. So I just hope that she has kind of a, uh, uh, it continues for her because music is, is joy, you know, music is healing, you know? 
Um, I think that, that, that I hope continues for her and her childhood. Yeah. How has music healed you? Um, you know, I kind of had an experience with that today and I probably couldn't honestly answer that question until, um, until today, because I, you know, my life hasn't necessarily been, been really hard, right? I'm not someone who came from too much of a struggle. My parents didn't have everything, but, you know, I have, I come from a two parent family and they worked for what they had, but, you know, we lived in the suburbs, you know, nothing crazy, but I did lose my father in 2020. And that's been rough because any losing any, anybody losing a parent is, is a hard thing. Um, and, you know, today, I was listening to a radio station that was just like an oldie station, basically, um, Chuck 1017. Right. Um, shout out to them. Great station. They kind of play just a little bit of everything. And it, there's a couple songs that came on in a row today, and they literally reminded me of my father because I, I caught myself singing them out loud, and I heard my dad's voice. And I was like, man, my dad really did like this song. And it was, um, uh, which we call it, uh, Phil Collins song uh, from Genesis, and it was. I was just like, my dad's voice came out, and then that song being sung for like the first time in forever. Quentin brought me joy in thinking about my dad, and not necessarily sadness that I lost him, but it was joy that we had moments like that. So I think music is healing in its memories, and. I'm getting emotional thinking about it now. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, music is definitely healing in the memories that it brings. It can also be, you know, painful in the memories that it brings up as well. Um, because there could be songs that, you know, from, you know, breakups or people that you love and things like that. But I think it really can be healing. So it, it, I think it's, it, it's funny that you asked that question today because I, I don't think I can honestly give you a really, really, really deep and honest answer without having that experience that I had today. Going back to the book, what does DJ Wicked Girl mean to you? Uh, it means a great relationship with my daughter um, at the end of the day. I think it means that we have a project that we do together because we've taken it past the books and now we're doing some media stuff, animation and videos. And she's the voice of DJ Wicked Girl. And, oh. you know, she's proud to be this character when she's at school and show it off to her friends. So, there's a level of pride there. I also think that the books are part of and can be a physical legacy of mine, right? Like people can certainly remember the parties that they went to with me and like, you know, to a certain point, because again, there's still a lot of alcohol involved in everything that I was doing, you know, with a lot of people in their parties, but now they can literally grab something, you know, and say, Hey, and have a physical memory. This is DJ Natty heavy. I remember, you know, remember going to these parties with him, but I also have this. I can, you know, let my kids know that he is still bringing joy via music, uh, you know, come some kind of thing musically to them, even though it's with books. So I think it's also just part of my legacy as well. And how has this book strengthened your relationship with your daughter? Oh, it's awesome, man. We uh, literally just like, it's so cool because because she gets so much pride in seeing DJ Wiki Girl on like her t-shirts or yes. we just did this video thing with the Post and Courier. So there were these big videos um, being shown for kids at a dance party and she got to be there. And so like, it's great that she gets like this pride uh, in hearing her voice in it and, and seeing her, um, you know, her actions come to fruition. Um, Cause sometimes she is definitely annoyed by, when I ask her to do some things, you know, so I try to not to, you know, celebrity kid work her too much, you know, I'll be like, Hey, do you think, are you in the mood to do this? And she'll be like, no dad, I want to go play. So like, right, cool. Then we won't do this project right now. Um, but when it like, so like the other day, her and I recorded a song together just to do it, you know, and it, like, so because now she knows that we can do that kind of stuff. We have the, the power to, if she wants to create a YouTube channel one day, she, we could do that, you know, and we'll be able to do that together. So I think um, it definitely is, is strengthening just our bond for time together because it's also stuff, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I really enjoy creating things in, in this, this sense of media as far as 
graphical and, and video and audio. I'm, I live in an adult, I live in the Adobe suite. So, um, I enjoy that. And it's also just cool to see her enjoy the creative part of it. So we get to put our worlds together. You know, she's sitting on my lap and, you know, we're going over what we're going to do and she's giving the ideas and we're like, all right, let's do it. So then we do it. So, um, I, I hope it, it continues as a, as a dad, you know, you never know. You, you just might all of a sudden just be like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. But I hope it does. I really hope it continues for forever. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Nat, Nate Lopes, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Hey, man, I told you, Quentin, listen, I finally made it, man. I am on Quentin's Close Ups. I feel like a Charlestonian <laughs> of importance, finally, man. Like, Seriously, it's so fun. I've been sitting here for years like, when is he going to ask me? When is he going to ask me? When is he going to ask me? I made it. My mama, I made it. I made it to Quentin's close-ups. This is amazing. I mean, you're doing amazing things, man. Yes, Look, you I mean, you're, you're, your recognition is crazy. And I, I really applaud you for what, you know, this platform that you've created, um, this platform that you've worked hard for for a number of years. I remember watching you, I, I believe, when I was on Tessa and Baby J and the radio. Yes. I mean... You've been doing this for years, man, and I, I really do applaud watch and I've watched you grow and it's it's really great to see your passion. So congratulations to you and thank you for, for letting me be a part of, of your legacy, man. I really do really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in, uh, in, on Saturday in Mount Pleasant at the Bridge Run. Hey, let's go. Let's party. Let's do it. Yes, let's yes, do it. Yes, yes. yes, right, yes I got to yes. rest up for that. I got to stretch a little bit too. Yeah. So. <laughs>